you mentioned so many times about the one percent paying the fifty percent of the state income tax. I'm okay, proud of all that. right, fair No, we're, we're proud of those entrepreneurs. We're proud of those dreamers. We're proud of those risk takers. I'm a small business person. I've started th 21 companies, 1,000 employees. You're a great businessman. No, but it's like it, this is I in my DNA. Wrong. I'm passionate about that. So California never held me back. It gave me every opportunity in the world. Right. All these folks, Elon Musk, Tesla, exist because of California's regulatory framework. Why are they moving their headquarters of, out of here? You know why? They moved their R&D headquarters money. back. To save money. They moved their R&D world headquarters back just three weeks ago. Why did they do that? The list is Wasn't a mile to save long. Money you can pick out one company. there's no state doing more in R&D than California. Is, these, That's the answer. These companies are leaving for one these reason. These companies are starting they're, for another reason. They're moving to increase their profits Be, and save because, money because you tax too much. Because we created the conditions where they flourished. And then they get to a point of maturity and they get a point of becoming multinational companies. And they leave, that, why? That, and they move the headquarters, because why? Because some find greener pastures or are looking for defensive postures as it relates to economic they're risk. They're try, but they're, there's thousands, we have 47% increase in business startups this year compared to last year. Would you not acknowledge one of the But acknowledge the, the seeds that are planted every single year. Not our, it's, a, it's almost a point of success. We birth these folks, they move out of the house, and thousands more okay, birth so every single thing. year. So they build their companies here, and now all of a sudden they're paying that high tax bill. They were always so they move their headquarters money. away. No, jeez. I mean, with, by the way, do you support you, the idea? This is the honest way to be the fourth largest economy leaving. in the world. What are you arguing for? Mississippi's economic policy? Is that, I mean, literally, that's if what you're, you're asking for. me. If I wanted the great if I wanted Bromex, the Kansas policy, I mean, it was a debacle. No economic is, growth. 71% of the GDP in America are in blue counties. I would say 71% of the GDP in America are blue counties. Are blue centers. counties. Centers. Progressive policy. Policies. Okay, that are paying high taxes and 71% of the country's wealth. Seven of the top 10 dependent states. Let's say are you're right. States. Let's say you. No, been. we're subsidizing your states, Let's, Sean. You're not because of your policies. I'm in New York. You're not subsidizing right. anything from but me. But your philosophy. I'm getting the hell out of New York, though. I'm, I, Mississippi, <laughs> Alabama. I'm uh, all for it over over New York or California. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I love Mississippi. But what you say, Governor? Uh, I'm, me one. I'm sure. Look, this is not personal. No, none of it. But the point is. They build their, let's give you credit. You have entrepreneurs, Silicon Valley, by the way, San Francisco in the last two years lost 7.5% of the population. I'm sure you saw that article. But here's the point. I would argue these companies are leaving because, and they're moving the headquarters and they're moving employees and they're going through that expense because regulation, taxation, it is stymieing the incentives to build businesses here. Well. Now. I would argue to you that if you lower taxes and lower your regulation standards, that California would be a net migration state. But I know you're not going to agree with I'm that. I'm passionate about regulatory reform. I've got 11 regulatory bills on permitting and procurement. I've never taken a backseat to anyone. I've reformed our CEQA bills. I've done it as it relates to vegetation forest management related forest fires. Again, I'm not an ideologue on any no. of this. I have not argued for an increase the tax rate for the top 1%. It's been around a decade. And look at the receipts. So you're not talking about but lowering it. look at it. the receipts over the last decade in economic growth. We've outperformed most Western democracies. The state has grown, just like our American economy has grown, by $4.4 trillion since Biden's been in office. Our global GDP so, continues to be so dominant. All of these this country is doing remarkably better yeah. than I think a lot of your viewers believe. Why Sean Hannity would air this I'll never know. They say any press is good press. If you're Sean Hannity, this is not good press. Now, before I say anything else, I want to tell you about something called the Kansas Experiment. Back in 2012, Kansas's Republican governor, Sam Brownback, wanted to pass the largest income tax cut in the state's history, comparing his tax policies with that of Ronald Reagan and describing them as a real-life experiment based on trickle-down economics. He called it, quote, a Midwest renaissance rooted in the Reagan formula. He predicted that the experiment would create over 20,000 jobs and increase tax revenue by $323 million. Now, what actually followed were, quote, nine rounds of budget cuts over four years, three credit downgrades, missed state payments, and an ongoing atmosphere of fiscal crisis. 
Kansas's budget gap ballooned to $900 million, economic growth and job creation underperformed the national economy, neighboring states, and even Kansas's own growth in previous years. Kansas underperformed its neighbor, Nebraska, by 7,000 jobs, even though Nebraska had a smaller labor force. And by 2017, Kansas's Republican legislature voted to repeal Brownback's tax cuts and enact tax increases instead. When Brownback vetoed that repeal, the Republican legislature overrode that veto. Brownback ultimately became the least popular governor in the entire United United States and resigned at the end of 2017. So when Republicans applaud trickle-down economics or suggest that tax cuts will foster growth, just remember that we've already done this experiment within the last decade, and what followed was a catastrophe of such epic proportions that even the state's own Republican legislature needed to repeal it. Heavy tax cuts and the abandonment of a progressive tax structure serves one purpose, to benefit the ultra-wealthy. They do not benefit society, they do not benefit the middle class, they do not benefit job growth, they do not benefit economic growth. They are a gift to millionaires and billionaires to the detriment of everything else. Now going back to this interview, just a few notes here on the crux of Hannity's argument. He's trying to attack Newsom on California's progressive tax structure, but here's the thing. When Hannity attacks taxation, he is betraying the fact that he is in the tank for the ultra-rich. And this position is no different from any other Republican. These people are in government not to help the people who need the help, but precisely to help the people who don't. They are there to shield the ultra-wealthy from having to pay their fair share, which would bolster middle and lower class Americans. It is that money that funds our education, our roads our police, our fire departments, our teachers, our parks, our social services. Those same programs and services, by the way, that benefit the ultra-wealthy, too. When we have an educated population, everyone wins. When we have adequately funded infrastructure, everyone wins. But the Sean Hannity's of the world aren't interested in that because all they see is their own wallet. Everything else be damned. Even if Hannity himself benefits from those same programs that he's now looking to defund. It's always so interesting how the people who crow about community are the same ones doing nothing to actually foster it. And in terms of the major companies that will move out of California, let's just use some common sense here. In most cases, the CEO isn't doing it because they need to protect the financial viability of the company, they are doing it because they want to hoard more money for themselves. The example that was brought up in this interview was Elon Musk, who moved Tesla's headquarters from California to Texas. That guy is the richest person in the world. If you need an example of hoarding wealth, it quite literally literally does not get clearer than pointing to Elon Musk. This isn't about the financial viability of Tesla, it's about Elon not wanting to pay more taxes. And if you think it has to do with anything else, then you're kidding yourself and you know you're kidding yourself. And then finally, here's the most important point. Hannity seems to be under the impression that blue state's progressive tax structure is bad. And so as Newsom said, is the alternative what red states are doing? Is the alternative Alabama, Mississippi? Find me a state under full Republican control and tell me if the environment they create Created is more or less successful than a state under democratic control. Because while Republicans love to pretend that they've all figured out the formula, in reality, their formula is simply that they are being funded by blue states on the left. Of the 15 most federally dependent states, 12 of them voted for Donald Trump in the last election. Of the 15 least federally dependent states, 10 of them voted for Joe Biden in the last election. So while the Sean Hannity's out there want to criticize, they never bothered to make sure that their own houses weren't made of glass. And of course, I should note that this portion of the interview is a continuation of Hannity's initial interview with Newsom that first went viral because of moments like this one. Your president, Donald Trump, lost 2.6 million jobs mm -hmm. during his four years. We've created 13.1 million. Fine, you can maintain a COVID frame. How about the fact that Joe Biden's created more jobs, six times more jobs than the previous three Republican presidents Is your, combined? Are you going to tell me Sean? that the average family, where we have two thirds of Americans now living paycheck to paycheck, it was 70 percent under Trump? Trump. That was seventy percent. It was seventy percent under Donald Trump. Pre-COVID, we had the paycheck. lowest unemployment rate for every demographic. Wait, wait. Now, we have the lowest black me, unemployment in history, you. and you and I are living with the lowest unemployment we had in it. our lifetime. We, Sean, we you had can't it for make every that demographic, and the economy black was black unemployment's along. record low under Joe Biden. Okay, inflation stubborn around the globe. Let's let's but let's talk about inflation. It's down 40% since last summer. 10 months in a row, 4.9%. He was okay. just with the UK prime minister at 6.9%. Is that because of Biden's I think Fed Biden's policy? economic and energy policies directly yeah. impacted the UK's inflation? No, I am Or the fact you. that France is 5.5% or Germany's at 6.1%. You're going to give you not on inflation, we're moving in the right direction. On the issue of the border inflation, security, he inherited 1.4% inflation, it went up to a 40-year high. 
globally, the forty year high. Globally. Globally, because you just brought so up, so, so you were making an excuse get, for Trump's dismal jobs record related to COVID. It wasn't a but dismal you won't jobs acknowledge record. COVID's relationship to inflation globally. And I'm not saying that Hannity is a masochist, but I'm having trouble finding a different explanation considering he witnessed that bloodbath go public the first time and thought to himself, you know what I need? More of that. So good on Newsom for yet again bringing the facts to counter this Republican narrative. Because while Republicans might lie, the numbers don't. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you wanna to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.